All right, so hello and welcome to the beautiful city of Prague, the capital of Czech Republic. This city is absolutely gorgeous. We've got the famous Charles Bridge hiding just somewhere over there. But anyway, come along and explore the city with me. Let's go. So welcome to one of the most beautiful and popular cities in all of Europe. In this video, you'll be coming with me to explore Prague's historical streets, stunning architecture and famous sites, so we can get lost in the magic of this city together, and I'm sure by the end, I'll have you wanting to visit too. Oh, and I almost forgot, we may even get a little surprise from a beaver or two along the way. Alright, so here we are, good morning, it's about 10am, but welcome to the city of Prague in Czech Republic. It's my first time here, so I'm excited to explore, but anyway, plan today, we're just going to have a little bit of a wonder. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I've got like a bit of a list of things which I want to see. So hopefully I'll get all that done over the next couple of days. Uh, but yeah, so I think we we'll just today have a wander around and see what we can find. All right, so we're just walking out onto one of the, one of the squares, I think. But wow, take a look at all this. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful buildings already, and then over there you can see there's quite a big crowd. And, uh, I think that is the Prague Astronomical Clock, so I think we should definitely go and have a look at that. It looks pretty popular. Interestingly enough, the clock is actually the third oldest clock in the world at around 600 years of age, but is apparently the world's oldest working clock. All right, so I just found out. I just asked that lovely tour lady there. So on every hour, so I've just missed it at 10 o'clock. Well, I just seen it, but I didn't get a video of it. 10 o'clock there's like some little figures which come out and they spin around which is why there were so many people here but everyone's pretty much gone now so come here on the hour if you want to see some little spinning figures all right so here we are we've just left the astronomical clock tower behind and here we have the old town square now it looks absolutely stunning and i really don't even know where to start we've got like a beautiful church there uh, a little monument there and something else which looks pretty interesting so we're gonna have to check all this out uh, first impressions, wow, absolutely stunning. Firstly, I couldn't help but have my attention drawn to this rather odd looking monument. It's dedicated to a man called Jan Hus, who was ultimately burned at the stake for opposing the greed, hypocrisy and exploitation common within the Catholic Church. And you can see this writing here, so apparently this says, love each other and wish the truth to everybody. So as sort of a philosopher, um, an influential thinker, it seems as though he was relentless in his pursuit for the truth, despite even though it meant and led to his execution. So I'm back in the old town square and I've got a bit of a dilemma. There's so much going on, I don't even know which direction I want to go. I feel like I need to just spin and stop. Let's go that way. So it's time to head away from the old town square, where I got a glimpse of some of the beautifully decorated buildings here in Prague, and the old town hall, which of course has the famous astronomical clock. And then I carry on wandering through the streets, frequently greeted by interesting artwork. All right, so I'm just wandering through and you can see like just the color is absolutely beautiful. So it's similar to when I've been to Gdansk in Poland, uh, Wrocław just came from there, Riga. Um, if you've never been, you probably don't expect it, but like the amount of color in these cities is just, we've got a hard drop cafe there. I think we're gonna carry on, head down that way. So it seems as though there's just restaurants, sweet shops, absolutely everywhere. And there's also something called a chimney cake, which you can see here. I just asked the lady, I think you pronounce it Gredelnik, I think. Probably didn't get that right, but I uh, definitely have to try one of those at some point. They're absolutely everywhere and talking to sweet shops. Sweet, sweet, sweet everywhere. Got an interesting looking gate and I think we're almost by the river here. So let's see what we can find over the river. All right, so I've just been wandering along and by mistake, I think I bumped into what is probably, I'd say the most popular tourist attraction in Prague, certainly the most iconic site. So right here, we've got the Old Tower Gate, I believe it's called, uh, a 14th century tower, absolutely beautiful, Gothic as well. And then the main attraction just behind it, we have got Charles Bridge. So I think we're definitely gonna have to walk along that, take a look, and it's probably gonna be full of people. So I might have to chuck a few people off. All right, and so here we are by the river and the previous bridge before this one uh, was destroyed because of flooding and this began to be built in 1357. It took almost half a century to build. And it's no surprise really, absolutely incredible. Whole thing built out of stone and you can see 
kind of just hiding over there, we've got the cathedral, I believe. Uh, it's a shame I can't fly my drone here because I would have been able to get some absolutely incredible shots. But anyway, let's take a little stroll over the bridge. Just as I'm passing through this beautiful archaic gate, I realise you can actually pay to go up it. So for about three or four quid, I head up to where there are some fantastic views down onto the iconic Charles Bridge, as well as the cathedral which you can just see on the right hand side. I also get a glimpse as to why Prague is known as the City of a Hundred Spires. Alright, so we're now going to walk along the famous Charles Bridge. And, uh, in the exhibition in the tower, the old tower gate, it said that when people were beheaded, they used to like hang their heads from the top of the tower, which I thought was a bit sinister, but also pretty interesting. And you can see all along the bridge, it seems like there's like these statues all the way along. So there are 30 statues in total, 15 on each side, and it seems as though they're all religious, depicting saints or whatever. See this one, beautiful one. Got Jesus on the cross, just chilling, but at least he's got a good view, eh? It was pretty busy, but it made a nice spot to just watch the world go by. And of course, this band livened up everyone's spirits a bit as they were walking across the bridge. And as I'm passing along, I notice some of the figures seem quite a bit older, and some recently renovated, but then I come across one which stands out. So you can see the rest of the statues are pretty much empty, and you might be wondering why there's loads of people crowding around that one. And so this little block here is St. John, and it's the only one which is coated in bronze, but um, back in like the 14th century, that bloke was thrown off the bridge into the river where he drowned, but apparently people touch it for good luck, so a bit contradictory, but... And thankfully this kind tourist decided to demonstrate the superstition. I think she's summoning special powers. Anyway, now that's Charles Bridge ticked off the list, it's time to head through that lovely stone archway to see what else we can find. All right, so I've just came through the Lesser Town Gate. We've got some more lovely looking buildings right behind me. So I think I'm gonna follow up this street because somewhere over that way, I believe is the Cathedral and Prague Castle, which I think are right next to each other. So we're going to head over that way, try and see the castle on the I think at this point you shouldn't believe anything I say. We're going on another detour, but it is to a special little spot. Alright, so in usual fashion, I'd intended to go to the cathedral, but I got distracted again, but for good reason. So right behind me here, we've got a beautiful, colourful wall called the John Lennon Wall. And so this kind of started in the 1980s, and uh, John Lennon was used as a symbol for peace, to kind of challenge the communist regime at the time, but anyway, let's get a closer look. This might have actually been my favourite spot in the whole of Prague, an abundance of art and colour which commemorates not only the death of John Lennon, but also the death of communism, which was a bleak and testing time for so many people. And so this wall seems to beautifully signify a rebirth of life, freedom and peace. So as intended, after a quick McDonald's break, it's time to head up towards the castle and cathedral, which sit on top of the hill. So I head up this set of stairs, which thankfully offers some great panoramic views of the city at the top, and then leads nicely to Prague Castle. All right, so I think we found it. It doesn't look too much like a castle, but by me here, we've got the first courtyard, got some really interesting statues up there, and then very serious, probably National Guards there. But then I think if we head over that way, we can get inside. I believe it's free, so we get through some security, and then we head in and we'll have a proper look inside the castle. After passing security, we enter into the second courtyard where you can just see the steeples of the cathedral poking out, and I have to say, it was very, very impressive. I probably could have admired it and all its intricacies all day. It's unfortunate that it was closed, but I'm sure it's well worth taking a look inside this cathedral, which took almost 600 years to finish building. In terms of the castle, it certainly isn't the typical medieval fortress you'd expect. It's more like a fortified town really, but it is huge so there are plenty of parts for you to explore. Although, the cathedral really embodies that magical archaic aura which flows throughout Prague. So I'm getting pretty tired now, and I'll be heading off to back to the hostel, I think, for a little rest, but just off by the castle, I've got this incredible panoramic view of the whole city. Wow. After appreciating the lovely views, it's time to head back down to the old town. On the way, I spot a manhole cover with the Prague coat of arms on it, then make my way over the bridge opposite Charles Bridge back to my hostel for an hour's rest. After six or seven hours exploring without much of a break, it was nice to have a rest. Although, it was interrupted by a nice surprise out the window when I heard some music coming from the street.
But tonight, it's actually time for a very different kind of music. I've booked on to see a classical performance inside one of the churches. There we go, we're in row 14, seat number 3. Music starts in 20 minutes, it should be good. After the performance, I have a late night wonder and check out one of the really cool sweet shops. There seemed to be loads on this street, but I think this one was my favourite. It even had a conveyor belt for the sweets. And then I finish off what's been a really long day in this cool duck shop. Alright, and so here we are, we're out again. It's day two. Good morning. I'm going to walk through there, through to the main old town square, and I'll tell you the plan for today. So, plan for today, got a few more things to see. Um, but I can't remember them, so you're just going to have to come along for the ride. And, uh, yeah, I might have an explore by Charles Bridge tonight, because uh, it'd be nice to see the city lit up. But anyway, let's have another little explore, see what we can find today. So today's exploring is kicked off with a little wander down a street I haven't seen yet. If you're rich and like shopping, this will probably be your dreamland. Although, if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll know I only own about three outfits, and Gucci and Louis Vuitton are a bit out of my price range. So let's move on. We've got plenty more cool things to see today, not to forget the beautiful surprise of beavers later on. All right, and now just behind me, this beautiful building here, I have found the Rudolfinum, which is a concert hall. And it's no surprise that it's one of many really in Prague with its famous association with classical music. Out of curiosity, I take a look inside, but only got a glimpse of some nice interior before getting kicked out. Now it's time to head over to the cathedral in the hope that it will be open today. Alright, so apparently the cathedral's closed, but uh, there's a viewpoint at the top of the cathedral, so it's got to be done. So, 80 Czech Corona, which is about three quid. So, there's about 240 odd steps. Not be doing my bad knee any good, but for a good viewpoint, let's go and see what it's like. Stairs, 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 more stairs. <sighs> Alright, so I've just got up to the top. I'll turn you around in a second, but uh, I forgot to mention it was 80 Czech Corona with student discount, so it's be a bit more than that for uh, just your normal price but wow okay the views are pretty good i'd say the views were impressive so i would recommend visiting if you're in prague it was just a shame about the clouds i bet the city must look so much nicer in the sun but more importantly it's now time for me to introduce you to my new fluffy friend all right so i've just wandered down by the river there's an absolutely beautiful view of the bridge so i think i'm going to get a foot of my thumbnail there but more interesting found a bloody beaver like what i've never seen a beaver before in my life and in the middle of prague by the river loads of people well not loads but a few and there's a beaver just chilling there so it seems as though the uh, population of beavers has been sort of revitalized in the past seven or eight years or so and it's about a hundred now if you come to this little spot here in between charles bridge and this other one uh, on the far side on the castle side must be able to see them quite frequently but I just saw three. That's made my day that. I'd also just generally recommend visiting this spot as it's great to get a better view of Charles Bridge and probably gets you away from the crowds. And of course you may also get the chance to meet my new little beaver friend. And then it's back over Charles Bridge in pursuit of ticking the final few things off my list for today, including an extra couple of unscheduled surprises. All right, so one of the things I wanted to say, we've got Powder Tower, which was one of the original gates into the city. It's around 550 years old, and you can see it pretty much towering above everything else. Excuse the pun. And it also separates the old town from the new town, but anyway, we're gonna carry on and go underneath it, and it takes us to our next destination. All right, so we've just arrived at our final spot, and you can see just by me here, we've got Jerusalem Synagogue, and it's an absolutely beautiful building. It's uh, just about 10-15 minutes walk away from the, the centre of the old town. You can see the arches and stuff, it looks like it has sort of like a Middle Eastern sort of influence and the exterior design is supposed to be Art Nouveau, which there was a lot of in Riga. Yeah, so definitely add this to your list. I don't think I've seen many synagogues, but this is absolutely beautiful. And then I discovered this incredible building, which is the National Museum, which I'll actually end up taking a look inside tomorrow. But for now, I actually end up taking on an impulsive trip around a few other cool museums, starting off with Madame Tussauds. Firstly, we meet Bruce Willis, and then Jan Hus, the guy who I told you about earlier. I've got to say, it was a pretty cool experience as my first time at a Madame Tussauds. 
which to be honest, I never actually imagined myself doing. Then after meeting my waxy friends, it's now time for the Museum of Torture. While it was pretty interesting, I'm guessing you can imagine it was also quite morbid. So it did dampen my mood a little bit, so I think now it's time for something a bit more light-hearted. So after another long day in Prague, I rounded up nicely by visiting the Gallery of Steel Figures. It's basically full of handcrafted models made from recycled metal. And while it was expensive to get in, I have to say they were really impressive. Wow, this place is actually mad. We've got so many upstairs. As you can see they've got uh, two people from Avatar. Captain Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean. Not sure about those ones. Winnie the Pooh, maybe? Uh, wow. <laughs> Absolutely everywhere. There we go, that's what we want though. Just been watching Star Wars and I might watch another one tonight. C3PO, R2D2 and Yoda. Very shiny he is. That was bad, wasn't it? <laughs> and here's a nice selfie with Sid to bring my second day to a close. All right, so hello and good morning. It's day three, we've only got a few hours left until I have to head back to Wrocław, so on my list for today, I've got to get a fridge magnet. I've got to go and see the National Museum, which is just over my shoulder. You see this beautiful street here leading all the way up to the National Museum, which I saw last night. And then I need to tr finish off and try one of the chimney cakes. So I still haven't tried one yet. I did try last night. So that's the itinerary for today. And then we head back to France. So let's go museum and then fridge magnet. Or fridge magnet, then museum. So I think I found a spot for a fridge magnet. So it's Friday morning, and I don't think this was on the other mornings. We've got a lovely little market going on, uh, and there's some fridge magnets just there. They're a lot cheaper than the main shops, so. All right, now here we are, National Museum time. What an absolutely beautiful building, by the way. I saw it last night, and it looked like this. It looked incredible. Alright, so it's absolutely boiling in this building, so I've had to take all my stuff to the cloakroom, but wow. Check this building out. Bloody hell, it's absolutely beautiful. So I saw in the reviews that the, the inside of the building was absolutely stunning. And they definitely weren't lying. Wow, I think this is probably the most beautiful building I've ever seen in my life. From the marble pillars to the grand staircases. An array of busts, golden decoration and fine artwork really evoke a feeling of grandeur in this place. But of course there's also a great amount of things to see, like a full hall of minerals in colours and patterns you've never seen before, as well as a fantastic display around evolutionary science and some great exhibits of loads of animals, including the real bones of a woolly rhinoceros, which I never knew existed. And right before I leave Prague, I've got to try the famous chimney cake, which was lovely, but I did almost die from sugar overload which straight after is then followed by the coach back to Vratsov. All right, and there we go. That's another adventure drawn to a close. I am back here in Vratsov. I also have a video for this city, which I think you really enjoy if you did enjoy this Prague video. Anyway, Prague was absolutely beautiful. I loved it. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Adios.